Hello, I'm author Bob Pierce, and this is From the Studio. And this is Character Development Part 2. In the previous video, uh, Part 1, we talked about strategizing your characters and fleshing out their presentation, describing them, and so forth. In this Part 2, we're going to talk about dialogue and how to keep it flowing as you further the story through your characters' conversations. Now, you want to reduce the narrative to a minimum. We talked about that just a little bit in the first video. You want to tell the story through your characters and reveal in the process their motives and their personal thoughts. You, of course, knowing them so well, as you should, uh, know all of their personal thoughts and you know their motives. That's kind of the foundation of the story, of course. So you're going to, as you flesh out the story from beginning to end, reveal more and more of that. Now the key is to keep it elegant and keep it simple. Uh, think about how they write movies. They have mm, typically two hours to tell the whole story. So they have to keep it tight. Uh, that's what keeps things moving. And one of the comments that I hear from critics of my books time and time again is that they all keep moving. That they're a, uh, though they're a thick, uh, <laughs> sometimes a uh, very thick read, it goes quickly. Um, you can't put it down because every time they turn the page, things are moving, things are happening. And that's, that's the goal. That's the goal through the whole thing. Now, when you're doing dialogue, you want to keep that flowing as, as smoothly as you possibly can. So use things like he said, she said as little as possible. Uh, imagine a live conversation, uh, any conversation that you might have with somebody uh, at work or just out in the world somewhere. Um, so when you start the conversation, you want to identify who's speaking first. So your reader knows, okay, this is so-and-so speaking. Then the person who replies, you're going to identify them. So now the person has in their mind, this person talking to that person, talking to this person, talking to that person. So you don't have to do that again for some time. Uh, just have the conversation going back and forth and back and forth. When you have two people in the conversation, this is relatively easy. Um, at some point, you're going to have multiple people in the conversation, three or more. That gets a little bit more complicated, but it's the same principle. Identify the first speaker and the first respondent uh, to kick things off in the conversation. And as you introduce other characters in the conversation, uh, introduce who they are. Identify each of those. Sometimes it's not necessary, really, to say who's speaking. Uh, you know, if some little tidbit of something comes out in the conversation that doesn't necessarily have to be attributed to somebody, uh, but does further the conversation along, then just don't bother. Uh, let, your, let your readers kind of fill in the blanks, if you will. If it's not important, uh, just leave that out and keep it streamlined so that it keeps flowing. Every time you insert a little something about, you know, John said this and Mary said that and uh, Jane added this or, you know, any of that sort of thing, it's a speed bump and it slows the whole thing down. Now, one of the things that is a challenge when you do this, you end up with some rather lengthy conversations sometimes, which can, you know, if the, if the reader gets kind of lost in it, uh, lose track of who's talking and so forth. So you want to break up longer conversations with some kind of action. So a couple of the, the mechanisms that I've used is, uh, well, for example, if they're in a, if they're in a restaurant, uh, at one point they sit down, they start talking, the waitress comes and takes their order. They do that and then the waitress leaves and they continue their conversation. A little bit later on, the waitress returns with their coffee. And so they 
stop. They take the coffee. They say thank you to the waitress, yada, yada, yada. And then the conversation picks up again. And you can also do things like uh, one of the characters uh, in my latest uh, Civil War book carries a pocket watch. And on occasion, in some of these uh, longer conversations, I'll have him take a look at the time. Uh, he's kind of the, the boss of what's going on on board this ship. So he has tours that he has to take around the ship to inspect things and whatnot. So he has to keep track of the time. And that's a mechanism that I use from time to time. Um, it may appear rude at times, but it has its purpose. Uh, but the key is keep it smooth, keep it flowing, uh, keep it all as streamlined and as elegant as you can. Now one little tip to add to all of this, if you have foreign characters, uh, people who normally speak another language wherever they're from, uh, what you want to do is let them occasionally default to their their home language. This way, too, that keeps the identity of that character uh, kind of maintained through the whole thing. Um, for example, in Russian, yes is da, and no is nyet. And sometimes the syntax of Russian versus English is a little different. So their sentence structures might be a little bit different. And so that, when they're speaking, helps to identify them without having to identify them. What you'll want to do is, uh, as you're going through the whole thing, look up various translations. Um, I picked this up, the Complete Idiot's Guide, Complete Idiot's Guide, that's me, to learning Russian. <laughs> um, notice the, uh, the spine is barely creased. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how complete an idiot I am when it comes to Russian, but this book wasn't a lot of help, but it was some. Uh, mostly, I go on to uh, Google and do translations when I need little bits here and there of, of pretty much any language. Um, it also it even has Gaelic, which is useful for all of my Lamb Derrick books. But also, too, I have found that there are different translation sites out there who may translate things just a wee bit differently. So I'll check two or three of them and see what the consensus is and roll with that because I, all right, I am by nature not a very trusting person, I guess, especially when it comes to the Internet. Now, when you're writing your first draft, remember to write bloody. Remember the slogan from the earlier videos. Don't sweat any of this stuff yet. Uh, get it down. Get your story down. Get your dialogue down. Get your ideas down. And get that first whole book down, uh, every chapter from beginning to end, and approach it as a body of work not individual little chapters. And then as you finish that first draft, you'll start fleshing out each of the characters a little by little from draft to draft. Now each character needs to be unique and that will happen as you go through this process from draft to draft, fleshing out each character. Um, there are various things that you can use to identify them uh, just in their persona. Uh, of course, the language thing that we mentioned just a minute ago, uh, but also each character has a voice. Um, some are more educated than others. Some may use more uh, colloquialisms or slang or something like that. Um, also, too, some may use better grammar. Uh, some may use uh, some local terms from wherever it is they're from, which can not necessarily just be uh, international, but can be national, too. I mean, you just consider uh, the northeastern part of the U.S., New England, uh, Boston, uh, consider New York and New Jersey and that area, the Midwest, the South, the Deep South, Texas, uh, all these different regions of the same country 
have slightly different dialects and little different ways of speaking. And if you can work that into your characters, then not only do you identify where they're from, but you also identify them as individuals throughout your story. So the takeaways from these two parts on character development. Define your characters before you begin. Um, you may add other characters as you go along as different situations demand, but start off with a uh, start off with a stable of main characters and some peripheral characters that you're going to need that you know you're going to need uh, just getting started. Get to know each of your main characters intimately. Uh, as a parent would know their child, you need to be familiar with every little detail of their lives. And of course, we're writing fiction here, so you're going to make all of that up. And in other videos, we talked about how to go about doing that, uh, finding various inspirations for people and characters. Use dialogue extensively to further your story and use narrative as little as you can possibly get away with it. The key is always to keep it simple and keep it moving and don't overwrite. That's kind of the last point here. Don't overwrite. Leave room for your reader's imagination. And that goes for the narrative, the plot, the story, and all of your characters as well. So until next time, I'm Bob Pierce from the studio.